And this week on First Date with Lauren Compton. Do you have to keep it quiet when you have sex, though, since you have roommates? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys bang on the first date? I touched her. You don't have to go into okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it embarrassing? Because you got something in your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to see you tonight. First date. And we're back to another fun episode of First Date. My guest today is a Kill Tony regular. He's opened up for Joe Rogan and Tony Hinchcliffe. During his Kill Tony appearances, he's usually roasted for his dating life, but he has a girlfriend now. He was previously a serial dater. Let's welcome Hans Kim. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Martini glasses. I know. Is this your first uh, martini ever? I think so. It's <laughs> one of my first. These glasses are so easy to spill things in. Well, you have to focus. Yes. Or drink for really, high class. really fast. Ooh. Chuck. Chuck. It's like college on this show. That's how you show those upper class hoity-toity people that you're better than them right if you want to be better than them too you can go to uh store.ymh.com and buy your ymhstudios.com <laughs> um so this show mm -hmm. i'm gonna ask you a bunch of dating questions Ooh, i've I'm got a menu here i have appetizer questions Ooh. do you need a safe word uh yes what's your safe word flabbergasted <laughs> Okay, we'll do it. It's hard to it. say with a gag in your mouth, but... We can get you a gag ball. <laughs> yes. That's how I like to do my dates. <laughs> with a gag ball? Yeah. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> that way the woman can do all the talking, like they should. Oh, really? Most men want the woman to shut the fuck up, <laughs> but you just like to hear her talk. Yeah, I got to do what I can to put it in. <laughs> girlfriend now that's exciting oh, yes. hello hey how, sweetie how how long have you guys been together five months do you love her yes a lot yes enough to not cheat on her um, yeah <laughs> way more <laughs> i passed past the minimum threshold for that yeah how'd yeah. you guys meet after a show i was headlining the vulcan and then oh you used up. your stardom i was being a star and then she came up to me and it was, was it just fireworks? Yeah, I guess so. It was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually, uh, you know, I had to go away on vacation and uh, for a show to Hawaii. And then I came back and then we, you know, she gave me her number. And then after I came back, then we started hitting it off. Where did you guys go on your first date? Uh, she came to my house. Did you guys <laughs> bang on the first date? <laughs> We were sexual, but we didn't have sex. Okay. We made out. I touched her. Oh, you don't have to go into okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> yes. You guys hit it off. And it's been yeah. five months, so it sounds yeah. like it's going well. It was amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a great, great time for me. What is the key to... <laughs> <laughs> what is the key to a great relationship for you? What makes for it work? For me, I would say the same level of energy or like going outedness because I like to go out. We do comedy. We're out all the time. We're hanging out pe with people. And she is just um, hot. So she's used to that <laughs> yeah. going out. and Because she has a good time going out. Everyone's nice to her. I don't have a great time going out. But then I did comedy and now I enjoy it. Yeah. Popularity helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your love language? Um, probably uh, acts of service. Okay. What does she do for you? She comes to visit me. She uh, uh, buys me Thai food sometimes. She's your sugar mama. Yeah, we're pretty even. I think I'm ahead of her in terms of money. Yeah. Who do you feel should pay on a first date? Uh, The man, usually. Does she ever try to pay when you guys go out? Mm, yeah, yeah. But like not like for official dinner dates for like, you know, like a popsicle or some random shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. A popsicle. Yeah. Something smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a coffee. Yeah. But it evens out roughly. I would say like I pay for like 75 and she pays for 25% of things. It's very accurate. <laughs> yeah. <How? laughs> what is your favorite thing to do when you guys go out together? What do you, What's y'all's thing? Uh, we like to lay in bed or couch, watch TV. We recently watched Titanic and play Settlers of Catan, eat Thai food, and smoke a bunch of weed. She likes to do whippets. We do mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Man, whippets are intense. Yeah, they're they're a lot. I've I've been watching her do it a lot, and it's a it's a it's it's like you can't just like smoke it and then just chill like weed. You right. gotta like keep doing it. Yeah, you should probably whip it out of her hand at some point. <laughs> <laughs> those those can be kind of crazy. Yeah, it's not good for your brain. Yeah, it could really fry it. Yeah. But hey, she likes to be on the couch and on the bed, so <laughs> she's doing something right. Yeah, I'm keeping her sedated. Do you cook? Um, yes, but not food that she likes. What do you cook? I, I put ribs in the oven and then I eat them. Is she a vegan? No, she just thinks I it's undercooked and not seasoned. Oh, well, why don't you just add a little seasoning? I just don't. It doesn't. I, it doesn't speak to me. I, it doesn't. You're call selfish. To me. That's a red flag. <laughs> um, what do you cook to impress her? Do you ever cook something to impress her? No, you we selfish dick. Why? She doesn't cook either. She has TV dinners. She microwaves that for me sometimes. What is she? Eighteen. She is a, mil a Gen Z. She is nineteen. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she is twenty five now. Okay. Well, she I'm not 24. here to roast her. <laughs> yeah, she's lovely. She is lovely. We <laughs> like her. Yes. Um, well, how do you relax besides laying on, I guess, do you play video games? Mm, not really. I play um, drone simulator now, which is like practice for drone droning in real life. Okay. So I play video games to get better at real life. Does that work? Yeah. I mean, not to get laid, but to fly drones. <laughs> But I do play. I used to play a lot more, but I've recently done just a lot of stand-up comedy. And I play Settlers of Catan online, uh -huh. which is a board game that you can play on the internet. So I don't know if that's... Is that better than a video game or is that worse than a video game to you? I play with my girlfriend. Oh, well, it's a group activity. I'll let it slide. <laughs> um, what do you want to fly drones for? I love flying. I love being able to fly around and see things and like get awesome videos mm -hmm. and get perspectives and see things that I might not be able to and also to annoy people. Like annoy strangers. people? Yeah, people really hate drones. Do they? Yeah. So you're going to fly them around the people that hate drones even more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's because a red flag, Hans. <laughs> I like fucking with people. Do you? Yeah. Were you fucked with as a kid? Yes. How? Uh, for being Asian. Oh, people are just jealous you're smarter than them. <laughs> that's what I told them. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's the truth. Um, we're going to move on to some main course questions here. Okay. I'll go back to some appetizer questions in a minute, but I want to know some of these things. What is a turn off in bed for you? A turn off in bed is someone who... Um, is like selfish or doesn't consider the other person's needs um sexually yeah or just is unaware of the other person and what they need yeah so so someone who is selfish in bed is like a starfish <laughs> right i mean just i like lays that. on their back i like that so i think that's very considerate if you do that for me <laughs> <laughs> just let you get on top and take control yeah I've got a friend for you. <laughs> uh, let's say you meet your soulmate. 10 out of 10, it's your soulmate. What can they do to ruin it? She's gorgeous. She's got, she talks your ear off, likes to fly drones. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's flying right into my heart. I just described, <laughs> just described an AI robot. Um, what can she do to fuck it up? Uh, she can be cold and mean and, you know, just like 
Cruella de Vil. Mm-hmm. That would be a turn off. Someone who's warm and kind. I like. I need a lot of kindness. I feel like I've been really uh, <laughs> not doing well in the dating game for a while. So I'm just like really adverse to any sort of like meanness or you know like the thing that i like about my girlfriend is like she chose me and i'm like wow she has good taste <laughs> so <laughs> that's fair so yeah i i need someone who's really nice to me i hope i'm gonna out outgrow that because i don't want to just be like oh she's nice because anyone can be nice but yeah i'm uh so far so basic yeah well, true colors come through after a while. So if someone pretends to be nice and they're really not deep down, you'll find that out sooner than later. Yeah, it's a marathon. It comes out eventually. That's right. Uh, do you still talk to any of your exes? No. Have you ever cheated on anyone? Nope. Has anyone ever cheated on you? Yes. Damn it. <laughs> a bunch of bitches. Yeah. Did you ever take anyone back? Yes. Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't have. But yeah, I broke up and then we got back together, broke up, back up, got back together. It's really messy. So did she, was she seeing other people in the times of your breakups? Yeah, and then it kind of lapsed over. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's that not sucks. a true breakup. Yeah. Yeah, it's just messy. Toxic. Then, yeah, and then your feelings get caught up and you can't just get out of it for some reason. Yeah. What's the longest relationship you've ever had? Six months. So this one's coming up. Yeah, do we're about to break the record. Yeah, do you think it's going to go over six months? Yeah, I think so. I think that we got over a lot of bad things. So like, if we can get through that, I don't see what can stop us. Do you feel like Thai food fixes everything? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so good. It's exotic. So it's like our thing now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's really good. Uh, and I can eat it every day. It's like, yeah, it's it's really unique. Yeah. Is she also Asian? No, she's white. And she loves Thai food. Yeah. That's <laughs> green flags. <laughs> what is the, are you a very clean person? Uh, I am more clean than the average, I would say. But I'm not that clean. Do you wash your car often? No, I should, though. I have a van, so it's harder yeah and it's more about practicality right but yeah i uh i should wash my van but yeah it's not that dirty right now if there's like bird shit on it like once i got it uh, yesterday i got into an uber that had bird shit on the handle and so that's you that you need to wash if it's anywhere else it's like a week but a handle yeah especially if did you're you, an uber you obviously still had to, or did you go around i just did this one of these motions just yeah. pulled it out do you open the car door for your girlfriend? No, not this one. It's on a case by case basis. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because she's Gen Z. She doesn't care about that stuff. She cares about vapes and whippets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you're on a bad date. How do you get out of it? Uh, I just write it out. I'm just like, whatever. You don't I'll waste go out? You don't get out of it? I would rather her just shit on me the whole day. Oh, no. So you, so do you push girls away so that they leave you? Yes, when it's appropriate. That's a red flag. <laughs> Why? You're because supposed to let them? Because you can't just break up with someone. Why, why elongate it? Um, I just want consent before I break up with someone. I just want them to agree to the breakup. Otherwise, I feel bad. <laughs> so, but what if they say no? Then I reluctantly continue the relationship <laughs> until, Hans, <laughs> until she finds someone better. We have to work on this. <laughs> what do you do? I tell someone I don't want to be with them anymore. Okay, isn't that selfish? What? <laughs> no! <laughs> if you don't want to be with someone anymore, you have to let them know. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. But if like in the transitionary time, you know how like you give a two week notice for a job? Uh huh. Just be like, hey, I, I'm not feeling it. And it's like, no, but I keep, want to keep doing it. It's like, OK, but, you know, this is my warning. OK, so let's. <laughs> All right, Hans. So let's say 
let's say that you give a girl a two week notice. You're like, this isn't working out. And she says, okay, well, I can get better. I can do these specific things and get better. And then she doesn't get better. Then what do you do? Then I try to put some stress on the relationship. And how do you do that? Um, be more demanding, um, not show up as much, have her, um, you know, have her pay for more food. <laughs> <laughs> Empty her pocketbook. <laughs> All right. Um, do you know the names of everyone you've ever slept with? I mean, I know their names if I saw their face, but like, like as a like as a naming them like right now would be pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there are some people that I don't remember. No, yeah, so I don't remember everyone's names. Have you ever had a one night stand? Yes. How many one night stands? Probably like seven. Have you ever had a threesome? Yes. <gasps> Have you ever had a foursome? No. <laughs> fun <laughs> i've never had a threesome really yeah that always you just shows. don't want it no i'm too selfish oh you don't like what if it's a guy that you don't really like and you're willing to share hans we have this all backwards bro <laughs> <laughs> if i don't like the guy i'm not sleeping with him and i'm definitely and then if i do like him i'm not sharing him okay. there's no so it's all or nothing. It's either we're together forever or I'm not seeing you. Now you see me. Okay. That's where I'm at. <laughs> Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before you drink alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Halloween just passed and I knew I was gonna get more than a sugar rush, so I took Zbiotics before I had anything to drink and I woke up today feeling great. Go to zbiotics.com slash date to get 15% off your first order when you use date at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash date and use the code date at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. When you go to sleep at night, what do you sleep in? Um, boxers and a shirt. Okay. Does your girlfriend stay the night a lot? Yes, we spend a lot of nights together. Is she going to move in? We're planning on it. Yeah, maybe that's your six-month anniversary thing. <laughs> no? Elise, that's a lot. <laughs> Elise is a lot. Yeah. But if you're in love and you're committed and you're clearly never going to break up with her <laughs> because you're reluctant, reluctant. <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe you could. Yeah, I mean, I would love to move in with her. It'd save us a lot of gas. Um, but yeah, it, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. <laughs> What's the fastest you've gone from meeting someone to having sex? Um, probably like uh, an hour. Was it in the van? Mm, it was in a car, her car, a station wagon. Okay. Was it after a comedy show? Yes. These are all after comedy shows. <laughs> <laughs> There's the no one other way. The consistent thing is it's all after comedy shows. <laughs> um when what is your relationship are you an only child no everyone how, thinks that well let's debunk this how many brothers and sisters do you have two younger sisters so you're the older boy yes. are you protective uh yeah have you ever gotten in a fight over them no <laughs> 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 have you you've, you've never needed to yeah they're pretty self-reliant okay have they ever protected you? Do they feel protective over you? Yes. Have they ever gotten in a fight for you? They've reported me to the principal or reported someone to the principal for me. The principal? Yeah, or a teacher. 
are they are they was, more protective over you than you are over them? No, they don't really fuck with me anymore. But oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, they're over there. They're doing their own thing. They're adults. They can call the police. Yeah. Um, but yeah, You're busy. when I was in like second grade, some girl was like, that Chinese boy is so funny. And then my sister was like, actually, he's Korean and I'm super offended. And she reported that girl to the principal for racism. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't even notice. I was like, hey, she thinks I'm funny. Hell yeah. What's your type? Uh, soccer girls. Ponytail. Mia Ham. Slightly brown. <laughs> like tan? Yeah. Am I tan? They're always running away from me. Uh, nope. <laughs> Are you trying to be? <laughs> yeah. Well, you try need, harder. You need to get your money back. <laughs> Why do you want to be tan? White is right. Because I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to be golden if you want to be specific. You want to be bronzed? Yeah. I want to look like sun-kissed. Mm. I mean, that's not necessary for a lot of guys. I think a lot of guys love the uh, blonde Aryan thing. Okay. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you more into tits or ass? Ass. Okay. What if your soulmate only has big tits and no ass? I love a small booty. Oh, you like small butts? Yes. Okay. So I like medium butts. I don't like big butts. Yeah. I'm into medium to small. Yeah. Medium to small. Yeah. I love, uh, you know, getting my hand all the way around it. Yeah. Are yeah. you into anal? Uh, I like what it means, but I'm not into the sensation as much. <laughs> What what does it mean? What does anal mean? It means you're willing to be embarrassed by me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Why is it embarrassing? Because you got something in your butthole. <laughs> Oh my goodness, if you don't write about this. <laughs> man, that's so funny. I'm glad I taped my boobs in. <laughs> I'm doing way too much movement for this one. Okay. Would you ever let a girl peg you? Uh, maybe after five years. When we're together for a long time. I'm not against it. Really? Yeah. You're not scared? Yeah, that way I know for sure if I'm gay or not. You're going to wait five years to find that out? <laughs> yeah. You got to make them wait. Why wait, though? Why Why five years? Because I don't want someone to just fuck my butthole and then just be like, what a loser. Bye. <laughs> you want someone to fuck your butthole and be like, damn, this is the right choice. Yeah, I'm sticking with this guy. Yeah. Whether it goes me. good or not. Okay. Like, what if I start crying? What if you start crying? <laughs> then they're like, oh, this guy's a bitch. <laughs> and they might leave me. But if I'm together with her for five years, she'll be like, oh, he's crying. Oh, that's kind of uncomfortable. But let's focus on other things. Like they'll just. <laughs> You're the, the sunken cost fallacy. You got them by the balls. How do you feel about condoms? I think that they're an outdated technology. Uh -huh. I think we have other ways of uh, maintaining, uh, uh, you know, not having a baby and getting rid of STDs. Yeah. All the worst STDs are, you know, curable now anyways. Are they? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, AIDS, not a big deal. Okie dokie. <laughs> I mean, you can't cure herpes. Yeah, but it's not medically concerning fuck it <laughs> fuck condoms yeah do you ever want kids uh yes how many three okay yeah that way they don't feel weird that way it's not just like one of them be like is everyone just looking at me the whole time yeah but what if two of them get along and one of them feels left out uh, uh that's that, your that'll friend that'll uh that'll build character <laughs> <laughs> They'll be the strong one of the three. 
what is the craziest place you've ever had sex? Probably outside of a, a field. My house was here, a field was here, and then there was a house under construction and like a beach right here. And then we had sex like right here on the field, mm -hmm. like at the edge of the field. And it's like, we had the blanket set out. We were planning on this. And then we got to the place and we're like, it's kind of cold. It's kind of like, it's really dark. But hey, and we're like, okay, let's get let's get to it. And we did it. Yeah. Just to say we did it. Yeah. Yeah. What age did you move out of your parents' house? 26. Six. 26 years old. Yeah. Um, do you have a one-bedroom apartment? I have a... Right now, I have a house that I share with three, two people. It's one, three of us, and I'm one of them, and I live in... Yeah, a little room that I rent out. Do you like it? Yes. If your girlfriend were to move in with you, do you think you all would get your own place? Or yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah, I'm just being frugal right now. Yeah, that's good. It's yeah. good to save. Saving up for yeah. the big move. Do you have to keep it quiet when you have sex, though, since you have roommates? We should, but we don't. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't, if you don't care, yeah, it's then it their doesn't fault. really matter. It's, they have to deal with it in their own head. You're probably teaching them a lesson anyway. Yeah. Why are you weird about it? Yeah. People have sex. What is the last <laughs> book you read? Ooh, uh, probably the Chapo Trap House Guide to uh, Revolution or something. I don't know. I'm that still book. in the middle of it. It's like a dirtbag leftist. They're like Bernie Sanders supporters. Oh. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, you're in your pearls with your martini. You're looking down on the yeah. proletariat. <laughs> uh, do you like karaoke? That's not yes. an Asian question. This is for everybody? It's for everyone. Yeah, I But love you're the karaoke. first person I've ever asked. It's inspired. <laughs> oh. It's Asian inspired. Do you like karaoke? Infused. Um, yes, I love karaoke. What's your go to karaoke song? Johnny Cash. Folsom I'll Prison. Go into a burning river fire. Is that the one? <laughs> no, Folsom Prison. Sing it to me. Uh, fuck. Fol Folsom Prison. And I keeps moving on. And I think I think a train. <laughs> you Jeez. actually have a good voice for Johnny Cash. It's a, it's in my register. Yeah. I don't have to strain too hard. That's why I pick it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would love to sing other songs. I just don't have a big big range. Right. You stick to what you know. Yeah. That's fair. Baritone. Do you have any other hidden or useless talents? I'm a drone pilot. We know that. <laughs> um, I'm pretty good at fingering. <laughs> okay. What about eating out? Do you ever go down? I do, but not often. Okay. Do you prefer to receive oral sex? I don't like oral sex as much. Oh, really? Yeah. I prefer hand jobs. Okay. Just because that stick with what you know. That's just what my dick got used to. I... <laughs> <laughs> so is like an ideal situation for you playing your drone game, getting a hand job? <laughs> oh... Yeah. Or would you crash that drone <laughs> yeah, right into it. a wall? Yeah, she's playing with my joystick. I'm playing with the joystick of my own. <laughs> There's, yeah. It's confusing which one's which. Hard to focus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think that you have anger issues? Yes, for sure. Where do you think your anger issues come from? From not getting laid in high school. Uh, and college and also being a foreigner and outsider. I think I'm very sensitive. I'm a soft little Asian boy and like Americans are very like tough and they don't, you know, they don't care about what you're feeling. They're like trying to express themselves more than they're trying to like, you know, not uh, step on toes. So I feel like I'm like a really sensitive little boy in like a world where everyone's like, get out of my way. What are you doing? I'm like, oh, sorry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had any nicknames uh han solo mm -hmm. hans olo uh hansy wansy uh-huh that's a little personal you gotta really get to know me to use that one to say the hansy wansy yeah that makes me feel like 
warm feelings. Aww. <laughs> How many people have ever called you Hanzi Wanzi? Not a lot. Uh, it's an elementary school thing for the most part. How did that come up? How did you get that nickname? Just being a child around other children, they just like, hey, let's, let's treat him like a child. But you like it, though. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah, but if I'm not ready for it, I could be like, whoa, why did I feel that way? Hey, fuck you. Right. It can catch you, catch you off guard. Yeah, it makes me vulnerable. Okay. Emotionally. Do you like being vulnerable? Yes. Would you consider <laughs> yourself a masochist? Uh, no, not sexually. Uh, Maybe emotionally. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of like comedy, yeah. Because you have to be sort of like, you, you, don't have, you have to not care about your feelings to do comedy sometimes. Like, this audience sucks. You're going to get your feelings hurt. But you're going to go up there and do it anyways because you're trying to get better or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to like sort of, if you're too protective of yourself, you're not going to do as many sets. You're not going to get better. You're not going to put in the hours. So, yeah, I feel like that's why a lot of, uh, you know, unhinged men are in comedy is because they're good at putting themselves out there whether they deserve to or not. Mm -hmm. And then they get better. Where like people that are more protective of themselves are just at home, just writing in their journal. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I obviously it's better if it's like good crowds. That's why like it's good if like someone gets like the boost where they're only put in front of good crowds over and over again, and they develop in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Charlie Murphy, I think. I, I yeah, there's different ways to do it, but I think like right now, like the state of comedy is like no one's really making sure things are going right. So it's just like whoever can make it will make it. So the tough are rewarded. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think that's always the best, but that's that's the way it is now. But yeah, I, I, I think I'm emotionally, I don't care about myself as much as I should. Hmm. That leads me to not care about others because I'm like, I don't care about myself. Why should I care about you? Yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to work on that, try to care for myself and care for others as well. That's a red flag and a green flag. <laughs> it's so a purple. So I like that you're working on it, but it's also still a red flag. Until yeah. You've successfully. Yeah. Done I'm, that. I'm trying to shed my open mic past. I think you've done that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we're there. Professionally, yes. Yeah. Mentally. Well, I'll ask you my dessert question. What is the sweetest thing you've ever done for someone that you've been with? Um. Well, with my girlfriend, uh, she we were watching uh, videos on YouTube of like cute things or like animal compilation, and she saw like a puffin, like there was a kid running around and the puffin was following her. And she's like, "Oh my god, what is that?" And I was like, "That's a puffin," and she's like, "No, that's not a real animal. There's nothing called a puffin." And then she looked it up, and it was a real animal. And then we were just watching puffin videos for like two hours, and then I bought her like a little puffin uh, doll, and then like a puffin mug and I puffined her out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's adorable. I yeah, love that. I like I like that she's surrounded by cute things. Yeah. That she likes. But yeah, I guess that's the sweetest thing. I I usually take uh her on on tour with me, so I pay for a plane ticket and then That's nice. Yeah, it's so much fun having her there with me. It's like my ally. And it's like a feature that doesn't have to go on stage. Yeah. So. <laughs> she's just there waiting for you when you get done. Yeah. What is the sweetest thing she's ever done for you? Um, probably like comes over at night when she has work the next morning and then just hangs out with me or like, um, like sucks my dick and stuff. <laughs> but you're not into blowjobs. I know. I just like that she wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram, DJ Hans Kim. Anywhere, DJ Hans Kim. Where did the DJ come from? I was posting on uh, Reddit, like some uh, political takes, some hot takes. And they were like, it says comedian Hans Kim on your uh, you know, Insta Twitter profile. But this isn't even funny. I was like, I don't have to be funny. This is just like an idea I had. So then I was like, okay, I'm a fucking DJ now. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and so DJ Hans Kim was born. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, you can find him at DJ Hans Kim everywhere. And thank you for coming on my show. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And we'll see you guys next week. First day, baby. Are you really drinking a glass of milk with dinner? First day, I can't wait. You told 
your mom about me? Just say you're ready. Delete my number.